reading char arrays from the input string. Okay, just basic user input. How do I read C strings? And Cybooks gives you a couple of options here. I've added more content to show you how you can read strings in a few different ways. So the extraction operator is the first way. You read it until it hits spaces or new lines. Okay, can't read anything more than that. So let's copy this and try it out here on Replit. You can try it out in that editor. This is a little faster. So if I run this, it's going to read fine, but it only takes the first part of my name, as long as there's no space. The minute I hit space, it's gonna stop reading, okay? So if you want to read text without spaces, that's fine. But then once we start getting into text with spaces and new line, then that doesn't quite work well for us. So we have the scene.get with two parameters and three parameter version. So the three parameter version, there are two parts to it. One is with the two parameters, which we'll see, and then with three parameters, okay? So the two parameters, essentially, I know there are three parameters here, but I'll show you how it works. So put the code here. You don't have to have that third parameter. By default, if you don't have the third parameter, it's a new line. So this is gonna work exactly the same way as what we had before. So it will read everything with spaces until you hit enter, which I just did, and then it waits for you to enter the score. Okay, so it helps if I have some prompt. So let's have some really quick prompts. And then for score, you simply say like that. So it waits for the user. And so when you run this again, so it says name. And okay, I typed in before and then the score. Okay, so until you hit no line. Now, any other delimiters, you must put it in, okay? There are two, two parts to it. Any other delimiter, which is the third one, you, so you put in the semicolon. If you want your data separated by semicolon, and that would be the delimiter you would ignore. So in this case, your name and your score, if you type it in separated by semicolon, then and so get rid of this, score, this prompt and say name and score right here, so your prompt would look like that, and you should have a little bit more. That's this name and score separated by semicolon. Then it would, you could do that. So it would read until the semicolon, which is what you told it to do, into name, ignore the semicolon, and then read 45 into score. Okay. So if you forget this line, then we run into trouble, especially with these kind of delimiters. Okay. Because then it doesn't ignore that delimiter in the buffer. And CN will try to read it and it might fail. And that wouldn't be a good thing. So for example, if I do that, there's my score is 45, but that's not what it shows because the, new, the semicolon is sitting in the buffer. We didn't ignore it. Score tries to read that. CN tries to read that for score and it fails. Okay. So anytime you use scene.get, you must ignore whatever that delimiter is at the end. So that's what we talk about here. The two parameter version where you really don't need to have this, you can leave it out, and the three parameter version where it's used for other delimiters. Okay, now the last option is the scene.get line, which is really the best option for us to use because it ignores the no line um, or whatever the delimiter is automatically. Okay, so here my delimiter for name is a semicolon, for subject is a new line. So that means if I input data like this, that's what it's expecting. This part will go into name and this part goes into subject. So if you hit enter here, it pretty much outputs what you wanted. Okay, you can change this to no line by not putting anything in there. That part works exactly like saying dot get. So you could have name, enter, and then whatever else you put in. And it's, this is output that's separated by the semicolon. That's just what I put in, okay? So seeing that get line automatically ignores whatever that delimiter is at the end, whatever you choose to use. And 
we would use a lot of these things when we start reading from files. In a couple of weeks, we'll start doing that. And you must know how to read data, CSV files separated by semicolons and things like that. So these are the three different ways. And you really must try and just take this code and put it in and try different combinations. The main, the main um, part of this is it will fail when you have other integers in between, not just strings all the time. So if I have an int score, and if you're reading name and then score in between, you must have it working all correctly. So if you do this, it should still work, okay? So if you run this, then how am I supposed to enter data for this? The name separated by semicolon, and then my score, and then what do I do? How does it know to read the subject. Oh, wait, it never prompted me for subject. So have some prompts. Now here's a problem that we just ran into, right? So here would be enter name. Here would be enter score. And here would be enter subject. Okay, now let's see. So I read score, I read name to semicolon, then I read score, then I hit enter, then what does it do? Let's see, I should get a prompt. Okay, there we go. Here's my name, semicolon, score, but it never waits for subject. It said enter score, and of course, since I had a semicolon and I entered the score there, it didn't, um, oh, and I haven't printed score. Here, let's print score. Okay, doesn't matter whether it's single put or double put, but I'll keep it consistent. Okay, so if I type in name, okay, semicolon, enter. Okay, so it says enter score because I read till the semicolon and I already put the semicolon in the buffer, 45, but it never waited for the subject. So what is the problem? That means it found something after I entered score and hit enter, that enter was sitting in the buffer. And notice it went, it took some line feed that was sitting in the buffer. So what do we do? After you read score, in order to avoid or ignore whatever garbage is there in the buffer, you must do this. Because scene.getLine does not ignore anything. It does not ignore new lines or white spaces, any kind. So you need to get rid of that line feed after I type 45 and hit enter from the buffer. So you must know how these things work in order to be able to make sure that it works correctly for you. Now, don't go around putting same that ignores in different places when you don't need it. So if I'm not reading the score, if I put in a new line or if I put in an ignore, watch what happens. Okay, so I'm not reading a score. I'm just reading the name, okay, until the semicolon. And if I hit enter, it should say enter subject. And so then I can do comp science and I get zero for the score and comp sign. So think about where you want to put in um, the ignore, depending on how you do it, you, you may or you may not like it. So let's say I take away that semicolon from there, which means I should be able to do this, hit enter. Okay, I hit enter, now it should say enter subject. But notice it waits, I'm not sure what it waits, and I hit enter, now it says enter subject. So the reason it waits there is because I said ignore until new line. Scene.getLine already ignored the new line that I did when I hit enter. So that means there is no more new line in the buffer. It's waiting for a new line. So this is not needed. Remember, this is needed only if you have a scene.get. With scene.getLine, you don't need to ignore that. So now try it again. Again, there are so many different ways to do this. So now if I hit enter, it's gonna ask enter subject. That's really how it should work, right? If you have to hit enter five times or an extra two times, it's very annoying. So think about the combinations that you use. When do you use to, when do you need to use scene.ignore and when you don't need to use scene.ignore? 
and what combinations of the data types make that happen. And the best way for you to try this is take this code and add integers in between, before, after, see what combination gives you what and when you need to ignore and when you don't need to ignore. When you use a different delimiter, what happens when you use a new line? How does that work? How does it work when you use different delimiters and when you ignore new lines? So try it.